Welcome back to Random Tasks. Uh, today we have a bit of radio slash computer repair. Uh, this is an old German radio that I got at a flea market many years ago. Um, and it didn't work. And that's fine because what I wanted it for was actually the way it looked. Um, so I cleaned up the old radio, gave it a new coat of paint. It was kind of faded plastic. I um, also repainted that. Um, and as you'll see, I completely gutted the insides. Um, and I need to take it apart because it's not currently not working. And I think it's down to uh, basically the, the software that's running inside, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but this is a Quella V111 Universum. So V111. And yeah, not like a, it's definitely not a high end radio by any means, but. I just kind of liked the way it looked and basically I wanted to make an internet radio or kind of connected radio type thing using uh, Raspberry Pi and the Volumio uh, software. So, and I think it's, I just need to basically redo the software on it. But to do that, I need to get to the inside first. So this is more or less stock on the back, except for this switch that I added, power switch. And obviously it is not plugged in, but this back is held on by four slotted screws. So let's take them out. Okay, so those are out. So just move that carefully. So, what we have inside here, and I'll just go for you. So that's a modern speaker. Uh, I've got a, the Raspberry Pi down here. Um, I've got a little amp on that. I'll need to figure out exactly what I put in. I can't remember. Um, and the power supply for the Raspberry Pi and everything. Um, I've also got a um, USB connection here, so you can actually see through here the USB uh, port I put there, so I can plug in USB devices, memory sticks, things like that. Um, but yeah, it's basically taking the audio output from the Raspberry Pi, run it to an amp, returns it to the speaker. It's relatively simple. Um, but again, I need to get to the inside of this because I need to get the, well, actually not the inside, I just need to get the SD card out of that, plug it into my computer, and reload the software. So fortunately, it's very easy to get the SD card out. I just pop it out the side. There, got that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else noteworthy about this. I did. Uh, the volume knobs on the front do work, so there's a potentiometer on there, um, so I can control the volume with the old knobs, but um, some people might think this was a terrible idea to ruin an old radio, but honestly it didn't work. This thing wasn't exactly valuable. I just wanted to be able to do this, this project. I've done another um, old radio kind of modernization project um, as well which is just up here. It's not actually plugged in at the moment because I don't need that. Um, but this is essentially a glorified Bluetooth speaker. Um, it has the other speaker, obviously speakers on the come pairs. So it's got the other driver in there. Um, and that works fine. I just don't need it right now because I have a, another stereo in here, which I'll cover in another video at some point. Um, but in the meantime, I've got the SD card out. So Time to go plug into my computer and uh, reload the software. So once you're at your computer, go to volumio.com and download the Raspberry Pi uh, version of the operating system. Once you have that downloaded, get your SD card, get it formatted in the FAT32 file system. You need at least an eight gigabyte SD card for this. And then you need an imaging program like Belena Etcher, which is what's shown here. Um, Raspberry Pi Imager also works, but in this case I'm using this example shown by an etcher, 
So you point the, uh, the program at the image file that you downloaded from volumio.com and then select the SD card and then you click on flash and then you wait a few minutes. It doesn't take too long. Um, I must admit that I've had mixed results with Etcher. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it actually didn't at the end and I used Raspberry Pi Imager instead. Either way, you need to get a program to create the, put the image file onto an SD card. And once you've done that, you can plug it back into your Raspberry Pi and get it fired up. So before putting the Raspberry Pi into the radio, I've got it plugged in here and to this monitor and keyboard just for the initial setup. And um, that way, when I plug it into here without a monitor, without anything like that, I know that it's been set up correctly. It's connected to my Wi-Fi, everything like that. And so this is something I would recommend if you can do it, if you're doing one of these things. Okay, so I've got everything temporarily plugged in. I'm going to explain the setup here. So previously I had this Raspberry Pi 1 in there, Model A. Um, that was kind of a little bit unreliable. I happen to have a Raspberry Pi 4, which I was using, or not using actually. Um, so I swapped them out. On top here is an Adafruit Max 9744, which is a 20 watt uh, digital amp. That's connected to this Sony speaker, obviously not original. You can see I used a MDF mounting ring in order to make it fit. Um, I happen to have a power supply that worked for the amp, so that's why that's just stuck here. Um, the Raspberry Pi power supply, uh, I took apart. It was originally a, a USB power supply, just so I could stick it all here. And I've got basically a soft turn-on circuit, and it's connected to a power switch over here. Um, the amp is triggered by a 3.3 3 volt output from the Raspberry Pi. Um, what else? I'm using the headphone output from the Raspberry Pi in order to input on the amp. And here's a potentiometer, which I will stick through the hole once I get this in its final configuration. I also have here a um, basically a USB extension. So I mounted a USB port on the back of this, so if I wanted to, I could plug in a, a USB stick. That's going to go into one of these ports. I also happen to have a 500 gigabyte hard drive from an old computer, which I'll probably stick in there as well if I can make it fit. And yeah, so now I'm going to turn it on. The switch here. You can see my LED there is blinking. The fan is spinning on the Raspberry Pi and I can see the lights are on. So the Lumio takes takes a few minutes to get it kind of fired up. So I'm gonna let this go for a while and then um, I should be able to connect it with my phone. So everything is now in its, I guess, final configuration and I'm gonna switch it on. Oh, but you actually need to plug in the wall first. That always helps. There, now it's on. Um, so I've got a 500 gigabyte drive here. This is just left over from uh, another computer and I've put all my music on that to give me a few more options. So um, I used to only use this really for web radio, but now I also have all my music on there as well. And before I <clears throat> basically put the back back on, I just want to make sure everything is working fine. One thing I did, I guess off camera, um, and really, I think the reason why this this project has taken me three, four months, I basically sat here for months and months because I was getting frustrated with the, um, basically getting the Volumio to work on the Raspberry Pi. Before I had it working on this Raspberry Pi 1 model here, which I've now got plugged in there. Um, and then just kind of stopped working. And I tried getting it to work on that again and put a new, copy of it onto the SD card and everything like that and just wasn't working so I made the decision to switch to this Raspberry Pi 4 which I had as well and um, 
tried setting up initially using the Wi-Fi and it's, it's supposed to create its own Wi-Fi for Lumio. It wasn't really working, so I ended up plugging it in, taking it inside and plugging it into the ethernet so it had direct connection. And then that worked. So I was able to set up the Wi-Fi on that and do all the initial setup. I haven't shown that on camera or done a little tutorial because it is pretty straightforward. But if anyone is doing this at home, uh, my suggestion would be if at all possible, do the initial setup uh, connected to uh, an ethernet connection. So a, um, rather than rely upon Wi-Fi because it can be a bit sketchy. But otherwise I think this is all buttoned up. So I'm gonna go off camera and just test it on the app, make sure it works. And then I'm going to put everything together. Okay, everything is uh, in place and buttoned up and I've tested it and there's music playing. Uh, which, of course, I need to turn down because it's copyrighted. So um, that's good. So I can button up. I did experiment by having this 500 gigabyte drive plugged into it. It didn't work. I don't know why, but I don't particularly need it. I'm mainly going to be using this for internet radio. And I do have the ability to plug in a USB stick at the back. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but it's fine. So now I'm just going to put the back... Uh, cover back on screw it in and then this project should be done okay and it's all back together and it is done and i can control the volume from here but um yeah so months of being apart and finally overcoming the um kind of project fatigue to get it done quite happy with the result and this can go back inside and off my bench so i have room for the next project so thank you all for watching i hope this was interesting useful and Please don't forget to like and subscribe.